Hi, I'm Jeff Richard, the creative director for Chaosium Inc. And I am Jason Neral, line editor for RuneQuest, the game we are discussing today. And today we're going to talk about the second part of character creation, the creation of your actual character, or your adventurer, as they are called. So the first thing that you do when you're uh, creating your adventurer, the second thing after, well, after, after your family, family background, background yes, determination, is then you select the runes that you want to be uh, most strongly affiliated with. Right, and these are the runes that we've discussed earlier in the series of videos. Right. So you pick uh, three of the elemental runes: one that starts strong one that starts fairly medium, and one that starts really quite weak. Yeah, and the other two you have no rating in at that time. And then you also select um, uh, two pairs of runes, which you are strongly affiliated with one half of the pair and very weak with the other half. So, like you might say, death and life or man and beast. Right, and then everything else is 50-50. Right. Uh, and uh, you're allowed to then put some additional points in to, to tinker around with it. But those runes that you've selected end up having an impact on your characteristics. Right. You already start to get a sense of, like, what are my character's strengths and what are their, um, like, their defining qualities that might move forward in play? How do I solve problems or what's the first instinct I have when I'm you know, confronted with stress. Exactly. And then and only then do you go into characteristics. And, and RuneQuest has the, the uh, more or less the same group of characteristics that Call of Cthulhu has. The main difference is, is that appearance uh, is replaced with charisma. Right, which is, I think, where Call of Cthulhu started, actually. It started with, they yeah, all yeah. started with charisma. Um, but two characteristics that are unique to the basic role-playing system and aren't very common in other games, if you're a gamer, is power and size. And these are both rated along the others on a scale of between 3 and 18. Um, some of them are start between 8 and 18. But um, these are basically um, rated like how, what your qualities are, how strong you are, how fast and dexterous you are, how smart you are. And it, so, for instance, power is how magically attuned you are. Yes, it's it's very specifically related to your sort of your strength of will, which is manifest in your connectedness to the magical nature of the world and the universe around you. So, a high power character is a very lucky character. There's somebody who has something compelling about them that other people will notice. Now, one of the things that's uh, worth pointing out is that charisma in RuneQuest has a broader use than it does in many other rune systems. Is, True. Now, part of that comes from the, 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 the origin of the word charisma. It's basically, uh, literally, it means more or less divinely anointed. So it's how much you're favored by the gods. So a high charisma character might not actually be physically beautiful, but very capable of, of commanding attention. Right. And, um, for example, hit points, which are um, another important characteristic of your, your character, are determined by the... Um, by your constitution. Right, by your constitution and modified by your size. Just and your like, power. Just like other um, abilities all sort of modify... Um, your characteristics will, like when you add them together and sort of determine how high or low they are, they'll actually influence your basic skills, which we should talk about next. Yeah, absolutely. So your characteristics uh, affect the uh, also have a big impact on your skill starting percentage. Right. So the various categories of skills, and these categories start with a, a base and then you add on to it the, the, the bonus that you get from uh, uh, your characteristics how and do, how do I learn skills well then you choose what was your occupation yeah what were you trained to do as as a person maybe you were trained as a warrior or as a scribe or you and you were a bandit or a shaman or a philosopher yeah there's a why these are not character classes these are just simply 
uh, the the your background occupation. So yeah. it's it's you. And for every occupation, every occupation is associated with it uh, uh, some bonuses mm -hmm. to your starting point on uh, a suite of skills. Right. So if I started as a heavy, uh, a heavy cavalry uh, uh, warrior, then I'm going to get uh, start with a good riding skill. I'm going to start with a lance skill or some other uh, similar weapon that's good to use from, from mount. Or if I start as a scribe, I'm going to start being illiterate. I'm going to start with some some knowledge skills. Right. And uh, these are, unlike in Call of Cthulhu, where you're given uh, hundreds of points to allocate yourself. In in this, you're given basically a suite of, of bonuses. Yeah, as you create your character and you move forward through the character creation process, it's mostly just additive. You end up adding little discrete bits of skills that you learn through, you know, that come from your background, your parent may have trained you in a particular skill, or then when you begin um, picking your occupation, then this is, this is what I was trained to do. It doesn't define me and limit what I can do going forward. It just says, this is where I picked up most of my, my, my skill set at this time. It, it, exactly. Then the, the next thing you do is you pick your cult. And this ties back into the runes is that in order to be a member of a cult, you have to have um, runes that are... You have to have the right runes. You have to have the right runes. <laughs> and they've got to be at a, a value of at least 50%. Although, honestly, you're going to want it to have it higher than 50% because uh, that also determines your chance of casting the magic. Right. And you can get your runes pretty darn high sure, sure. at the beginning of it. And with your cult comes some new magic. You learn both the regular magic of the cult and the rune magic of that cult. You get some starting skills. You get some and, additional skills, that's right. And then at the end of all this, you sort of wrap all this up, and you've got a little discretionary pool to further customize your character so you can add that into a skill that hasn't been influenced prior to that or to improve a skill that you would like to be better at. Um, when you're playing, and and this uh, some case, there seems to be a tremendous amount of different strategies that people have with their personal experience. Some care, some players like to 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 allow them to be very very specialized in a handful of skills. Uh, other people like to use their personal experience to buy new skills uh, and be decent at a, a very wide suite of but, skills. And there's really no optimal strategy on this. No, yes. no, no. It's just the classic um, difference of how to approach you know, problem solving. And then the final thing is, is at the end you have uh, every character starts out with some family heirloom which is, might be a magic crystal that can store extra magic points. It might be, um, it might be a, a, a follower that carries your shield around. It might be um, some weird magic item. Or it might be a little bag full of bones that maybe came from an ancestor. <laughs> well, exactly. It could just be something weird like that. Um, but, but by the time you've gone through the character creation uh, bit, you have a character that is a, uh, a competent um a uh, character that's going to be uh, quite good at their core skills of whatever you defined in this character creation is what your your character is really good for. And your character, given the past history of, of, of war and conflict in the setting, you know, your character is pretty experienced going forward. Now, unlike in some game systems where that suddenly it starts making, you know, your character able to shrug off... Uh, uh, death or 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 lots of problems. It, it just means that your character is uh, about at the uh, percentile level that you expect somebody that is good at a particular type of activity should be. Right, and at that point, it's time for new adventures, at which we will discuss.